Hi folks, this is Jay. I'm able to uh, finish the last part of this series, uh, Your Brokenness. <coughs> I hope you're okay and I hope you've enjoyed this series. Um, it's a series it, this message was born out of um, a lot of suffering in my own life and uh, I hope that I can pass on to you what, what God's done in my life uh, to encourage you in your life. So let's come before the Lord. Father we just praise you today and worship you and give you the glory and the honour. We thank you that you're a wonderful God and Father we pray for this final part of this study. Father you bless it to all our hearts in Jesus name. Amen. Finally in your brokenness in your brokenness mind what you say you see, in our brokenness, we can get bitter and we can get angry. Maybe someone has let us down. Maybe someone's hurt us. Maybe a group of people have hurt us. Often the church can hurt us. And we can easily get bitter and we can easily say things that are not good, that are nasty or unkind, unloving. Because in our brokenness, we lash out. Because we are hurt, we then lash out and hurt other people with our tongue and we've got to be careful about this because it doesn't please God Psalm 34 11 to 14 come my children listen to me I will teach you the fear of the Lord whoever of you loves life and, des and desires to see many good days keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies turn from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it seek peace and pursue it if people hurt you, don't retaliate. Okay? He said, Jay, yeah, but they really, really hurt me. The church really hurt me. Whatever. The church might have hurt you. People might have hurt you. Christians might have hurt you. Don't retaliate. No Christians ever justified in retaliation with the word or in any way. We have to walk with the sweetness in our hearts. I know it's not easy sometimes if people crucify you and crush you, but that's what we have to do. Uh, let's look at James 1.26. If you're feeling angry at someone who's hurt you, you're feeling you've been unjustly treated, then I would encourage you to meditate on Christ and meditate on who He is, what He's done for you, and the bitterness and the anger will go away and you'll have a sweetness in your spirit don't allow bitterness to get root in your heart James 1.26 if anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue he deceives himself and his religion is worthless you see our words can damage people but most of all it damages ourselves if we let things out that are not going to be building people up, or that are not what God wants, then it doesn't achieve anything, only hurt and harm. But most of all, our God is not pleased. So keep a tender heart. Avoid bitterness. You can look at James chapter 3, verse 4 and 6, 1 Peter 3, 10, about how you'd speak to people. So we've come to the end uh, of our study and um, we've looked at um, uh, your brokenness, praise God, in your brokenness go to God, in your brokenness God is good, in your brokenness mind what you say before God. Now imagine you're in a train and the train goes under the tunnel and then it's dark and you come out of the tunnel and it's light that's what your brokenness is sometimes you're in that tunnel and it seems dark and you don't see there's a way forward maybe you've had a divorce maybe you've lost your job maybe you've got depression I don't know but you're in that tunnel and you think it's never going to end let me tell you something it will end you said, Jay, I, I don't see it ever ending. It seems never ending. And I just can't seem to get 
joy I just can't seem to find any hope any any purpose anything at this present time in my life I, I just want to say to you and I and I say this with someone who's suffered a great deal uh, the last four years especially um, I just want to say that our God will bring you through that tunnel that God in your brokenness will bring you through and you will see a day of joy and peace I promise you he you will and I tell you why I promise you because I know my God is faithful and I know he's done it for me and I, I was in a t period of my life where it was so dark and I had no hope but I have seen God at work in my life and I've seen him bring me through I've seen him faithful being faithful and I know that he'll be faithful to you God has not forgotten you he has not left you on the shelf you can build your life again it is not the end of the beginning but it's the beginning it's the beginning of a new beginning okay Was that, did I get that right I don't think I got that right it, it it's it's not the end of your life at the moment if you feel there's no hope if you feel in that dark place it's not the end it's only the beginning there's, going to, there's new life new future new hope new vision for you my friend you need to hold on to these promises we'll, we'll look to one and then I'll leave you with the rest but Matthew 11 28 Matthew 11 28 Matthew 11:28 Come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. That's a promise from the Lord. Let's turn to another one. Um, Matthew 6:32 For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. God knows what you need. He will give you what you need. And then Matthew 10, 30. It says, And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. God knows every hair of your head. He knows every need you have. And he will meet your need. Okay. I just want to share this with you. In my brokenness, I remember I literally went to hell and back. I literally went to hell and back. Just as David went into the realm of madness, my brokenness was so intense and the suffering so intense that I went into the realm of madness because I couldn't cope with the pain. But I'm a living testimony today that if anybody goes through such suffering like that, that our God is a great God he is over the mountains, he is over the seas, he is over the world, and he is sovereign. And I promise you, our God is a great God. And he will bring you through. And he will bring healing and comfort in your life. Let's finish with these words. I will extol the Lord at all times his praise will be on my lips to him be the glory and honor oh God what are we but failures and weakness and who are you but God in all your splendor and greatness forgive us Lord if we are proud forgive us if we try to steal your glory we give you the glory today as your people in our brokenness father 
Help us to bring glory to your name. Help us to seek you. Help us to look to you. And work through our lives, we pray. May we be sanctified and grow in love and desire for you and others. Father, thank you for giving us brokenness, for allowing us to suffer, Lord, so that we might learn patience, that we might learn to comfort others, that we might learn that you are everything. And all the things that we held on to and thought were important are not important. But the most important thing of all is our Saviour. And so, Father, we give you praise in his name. Be with those who are broken today. And, Father, please comfort them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope that's been a blessing to you. And um, that's me for the day. Okay. Please look out for me. I'll be preaching, lecturing, doing Bible studies on YouTube. A phenomenal amount of Bible studies and preaching and teaching and I'll be putting um, the teaching that God gives me to teach I'll be putting it on the seminary website and a lot of that stuff will be helpful for you to be trained as pastors and preachers and uh, missionaries and in your pastoral work and in your discipleship with the Lord uh, pray for me as I reach out in Manchester Pray specifically for a, uh, a good team to help me to do a church planting that people would have the same vision. And the mission work in Manchester, which is going really well. Uh, please pray for the seminary. Um, it's not been active at the moment because I've allowed people just to download. But I'm going to start lecturing and uh, teaching on that seminary website. Um, basically, if you want to understand me, what, what I'm trying to do, I'm just here to die. I've been called to Manchester to preach the Word of God. And I just want to go to Manchester to die and help um, preaching the Word to save souls, helping pastoral care and pouring out my life for those who, who need Jesus. So, if you want to come to Manchester and come and die with me, then you'll be welcome to do so. Take care now and God bless.